Hey, today we're gonna to talk about mangrove snapper, especially for the guys that are fishing down here in the Florida Keys. Either if you live here as a resident or if you're visiting, June means it's big mangrove snapper time, right? These are the big fish that are coming out of the bay, they're moving out to the reefs, okay, spawning. And I'll tell you what, this is the absolute best time of the year to get in on some of these really, really big mangrove snappers. Now we're fishing the reef. 30 to 80 feet, usually you're gonna find these bigger mangroves in 50 or 60 feet of water, even like I said, pushing it out to 80. Yeah, you're gonna find some larger ones in 30, but I find that there's a lot of yellow tails and all this other stuff going on, and it's hard to really focus on those big mangroves. And that's what we want, those four to eight pound fish. Some are even larger, we're talking trophy mangroves. Um, so that deeper water tends to hold those bigger fish. Now it used to, really be believed that you can only catch them at night, but that's not true. You can catch these fish throughout the entire day as well. You've got to step it up and tackle a little bit. We're not talking about a 12 or 14 inch yellowtail snapper. We're talking about a four to eight pound mangrove with the possibility of a mutton snapper or a grouper jumping in the mix at any time. Why? Because you're fishing bigger baits, right? You're not fishing small little jig heads with little cut bait for the yellowtails. That's not what this is about. We're fishing live pinfish that's Bait number one, Primo, baby, a live pin. Ballyhoo, also an excellent live bait, or a Ballyhoo plug if you can't get them live. So again, big baits are gonna be the trick to catch these bigger mangroves and to tempt some of those other prize species like the mutton snappers and the groupers that swim along with those big mangroves in those same depths and feed along with them, I should say. So for tackle, we bump it up just a little bit. Okay, we go to a seven foot chaos conventional rod rated for 12 to 20 pound line. I think you can see that there. It's got a relatively soft tip right there so I can detect every bite. I mean, I can literally just every little thing that's going on, I can detect, but plenty of backbone so I can put some heat to them if I need to, to get that fish off the bottom, especially if it's a bigger grouper. I've got the rod match to a Daiwa Saltiga 30 HA, just a typical small little powerful conventional reel, nice smooth star drag. You can use, you know, really any reel that you would like, something comparable, but make sure it's got a smooth drag. That's really what is the most important. Line capacity is not that crucial. We're fishing in 30 to 80 feet of water. Okay, so certainly we've got 500 yards of 20 pound diamond line, which is plenty, but again, we're not looking for maximum line capacity in this application. The rig itself, and again, 20 pound diamond line is the monofilament. If you want to fish braid, you can, okay, you can. There's nothing that says that you can't. Um, but I just find on these mangrove snappers, fishing the reef, I like fishing the mono a little bit better. From there, sliding egg sinker, typical fish finder rig as we call it, right to a small little 50 pound barrel swivel. I can't stress enough, it's a balanced setup. You can see it's just a small egg sinker to keep that bait on or near the bottom in those relatively shallow depths. Small little 50 pound right there, barrel swivel that you could see. It's just a balanced system, very stealthy, but yet incredibly strong. I've got six to eight feet of 30 pound diamond presentation. Fluorocarbon, is fluorocarbon a must in this application? The answer is no, but on the days when that water is crystal clear, I like to have every you know advantage. So that diamond presentation is nearly invisible in the water, very abrasion resistant as well. Uh, at the end, I'm sealing the deal with a BMC, either a 5.0 circle hook, you could fish a J hook here. I mean, totally up to you either way. 5.0 seems to be the perfect size. And again, that's also gonna depend on your bait. And we're, I, I can't stress enough, we're not looking for those small fish. We're not looking for the yellow tail. We're going after the bigger snappers with potential for bigger grouper. So heavy duty hardware, you know, relatively heavy duty compared to that typical reef fishing, but not over, you know, don't overdo it. You really don't need to. So perfect that, you know, outfit for the mangroves. You want to anchor up, you want to chum. Ideal conditions include that current flowing off the back of the boat. That's going to be key to really getting those bigger snappers to chew. Be patient. The big mangroves may not show up in the first five minutes, okay? So give it some time. But after an hour or so, if you don't see what you're looking for, if you don't get any bites, not looking good, 
pick up and move, okay? Go a few miles in either direction of the reef, and oftentimes that's all that it takes to change your luck. The current could be different, everything could be different. So that's this week's quick tip, mangrove fishing down here in the Keys, do it right and you'll stay tight. GoPro, stop recording.